I feel like it's been forever that we've had somebody on Let's Keep It Real about health and wellness. What's up with that? I mean, why did I wait so long? Well, I waited so long for Greg Elliott. Hi, Greg. Hi, how are you? Uh, you, <laughs> I have to tell you, when I read your background and what you did, I was so pumped up because I love what you're doing. We're going to tell more about it, but it's not something I'm that familiar with. So yeah, I'm intrigued. It, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely a big push. And you talk about different industries getting technology. Sometimes there's some hesitancy, especially kind of in health and well-being. Um, in that area, it takes a little bit of time of how we we you know get this involved, but it's starting to evolve a little bit more and, and uh, getting to the point where it's very practical for people to, to start to be able to use it. Hey, listen, I'm all about awareness. And if it heightens their awareness, I'm in. But before we get into it, let me tell them a little bit about you. I love this. Greg Elliott is an exercise physiologist osteopath and entrepreneur who is on a mission to help everyone own their own health through education, motivation, and actionability. He is a heart rate, variability, and wearable technology. I've never heard that before. Thought leader, speaker, and a sought after healthcare practitioner. He believes in a whole health approach that's supported by emerging technology so everyone can live a long, healthy, happy life. I'm all about that. All right, Greg, before we get started, I ask all my guests, give me one word that best describes your past 30 days, whatever pops into your head and then why you picked that word. Yeah, I know it's, it's, I, I've, uh, I got prepared for this one because it was ah. a question that I, <laughs> that I knew was, was coming. This is, this is a big one. And, um, uh, the one word that came in through it is, is challenging. Okay. Right. And uh, and I think it's it's a it's a difficult time. I, I, the way to describe it is, is I have a young child that just started school. Uh, we have two working parents trying to be able to, to manage schedules and manage lives. And, and as you do that, as, as we know, as, as when things get crazy in our life, our, our health takes a backseat uh, into that, which then can spiral into too many different areas. So it's been a very, I say, challenging time for the last 30 days. Um, but, uh, to me, again, it, it, it is about the, the journey, what's going on and keeping the head straight and having a great supportive partner, uh, with it all. Uh, we, we, we work, we're working through it and, and, and getting, uh, and, and overcoming the challenges that are, that are coming our way, but it's been, it's been challenging, uh, the last little bit. It is. All right. So boy, girl, what grade, how old? We need yeah. So, uh, I have a son, he's five, uh, so he's in kindergarten and a daughter, uh, who's three that, uh, that's in, that's in daycare. So young little family. You are in the thick of it, Greg. In the thick of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And my wife is, uh, she just finished law school not too long ago and she's only just started her, her legal career. So it's, uh, <laughs> she's, not busy. she's not busy at all. No, super easy. Yeah. Very flexible schedules, all that stuff. Yeah, no, it's, it's been challenging, like I said, but it's, uh, you know, for us, we're, 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 we're on the right path, doing the right things. It's, it just takes a little bit of time to figure it all out. Yeah. It, it's so new. It's, it takes a little time, but I'm glad you mentioned that because we have a bunch of questions for you and right. we're going to go with the first guy and we always make up names to protect the innocent. Billy Bob, who I know well, owns health clubs. And he, he was really fit until he opened his third health club. And I'm saying this because like, you know, even if you are an expert, sometimes you can get lost. And he said in the past six months, he's gained 35 pounds. He's helped a lot of other people, but he doesn't know his way back. That being said, he does love technology. So please ask Greg, help me please. Uh, and I, it's not the first time I've heard this, you know, like this is my profession and I'm in worse shape than my clients. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a very common thing. And especially, you, you know, you, sometimes you, you, uh, you see that with personal trainers to a lot of it where their fitness takes a back seat. Yeah. You know, people are, you know, uh, in a kitchen and, and, and doing things with food, they, they, you know, just try to grab something that's, that's quick and easy to be able to eat, you know, things, you know, take a back seat when they're kind of dealing with things all day long. 
Um, and technology is, is good for a few things. Um, one is to be the fact that it can give you definitely a, a, an objective baseline as to where you're at, right? Subjectively, you may feel that, you know, relative to uh, where you were prior, uh, that you're not in a very good state, right? But, you know, yeah. when you start to be able to use technology, you can start to figure out truly, you know, are you, you know, how far away from the mean are you? How far away from various things are you? Are you in a danger zone? Are you in a warning zone? Are you in an okay zone? And so technology can give you that idea of to, to, to the starting point, where you're at comparatively to, to normal values. Then it gets you a starting point of to, okay, well, you know, I'm gonna start to do some things, right? I'm gonna be able to, to work on certain areas, whether that change in your diet, a change in exercise routine, work on you know, sleep hygiene, whatever necessarily it may be. It gives you great objective feedback as to the impact that that actually has. We all know these things are great for us, right? To, to focus on our diet is, is great. To, to increase the amount of physical activity and exercise is, is also very good. To sleep hygiene, all of these things are, are phenomenal. Anything from physical or mental or social well-being, all these areas, we, they can impact our health drastically. The reason why I like wearable technology, it just shows you the objective feedback as to the, how important those factors actually are. Mm. So to a degree, when you look at certain numbers, if you change your diet in a certain way, and you know you start losing some weight, but then it plateaus, and can okay, great, yes, it may make you feel better a little bit, and, and your, your clothes may make you feel better, but you're not necessarily achieving the goals. So it's time to alter when you start to hit those plateaus and start to look at that. It's something simple as a, as a scale that could be. Then there's also you know wearables of, of when you have a, a smart watch and saying, hey, you know I worked out, my average heart rate was 100, you know typically 120, I, I'm not achieving my goals. Hey, maybe let's do a little intense and see what happens when we go to 130. How does that help my sleep? How does that help my mental health? How does that help my you know, dietary choices, the way that I think or the way that I perform in a day? And so it gives you that feedback as you start to alter and change things, how much is an actual impact it actually has. So those to me are the kind of the two big, big factors. Now I wish there was a third of saying, hey, there's some sort of technology that can solve the problems for you and fix everything. Yeah. Uh, it is not that. The main thing is obviously to bring awareness and feedback of the decisions and the choices that you're making. Is it actually providing the benefit to you as an individual? Uh, we know research can say, hey, this diet is better than that or this type of exercise, but the wearable technology or technology in general can give you that end of one of understanding of, hey, is this the right protocol for me to keep going down? Okay, so I want to know, do you ever feel as if you're looking at the technology and you're getting the results and it freaks you out? Or, you know what I mean? Like, oh my God, I'm screwed? Or... <laughs> oh, absolutely. One of the biggest things uh, when people go from not using technology and using technology is they look at these scores and be like, my gosh, like it says my body is stressed or I didn't sleep or I'm not doing these things or, you know, they wake up and their their readiness score or some sort of number is, is yeah. saying, hey, your body's stressed and, and it kind of goes, oh my gosh, like what happened? What did I do? What am, am I, you know, sometimes they magnify and ruminate and, 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 and catastrophize about the problem of saying, oh, is this, am I going to have a heart attack today? type of thing, right? It, it, it yeah. weighs on them too much. And and to me, like I always say, wearable technology is not diagnostic, right? Unless it's a medical device, you know, you, using right. wearable technology is not for the diagnosis purpose. It's to be give you some guidance of, of where to be able to go, give some feedback in regards to the behavior, your change. You see people dive into these things where the, everything has to be perfect every day, right? And, yeah. and to me, it's, that's, that's not what we need to be able to, to That's do. my audience, they're perfectionists, you know? Yeah, no, it's not. Like you have to be able to find things are challenging. What like what we know is is you know you will be knocked down in life, but it's how you bounce back from that, right? So when people wake up with say, hey, the, the their wearable said they had a poor sleep, they're they're in a stress state, their heart rate is high, heart rate variability is low, all these type of things that are not ideal in situation to start your day, all that tells me if I see my like even for instance for me, I I've worn wearables constantly. Sometimes I have four wearables on at a time to look at various things. You have any on now? Just I have one. Just one that's on my finger. That's okay. Yeah, so it's a lit, it's called the Aura Ring. I uh, okay, never a seen. Little type of wearable. Now I haven't even looked at my numbers from last night or today. I have no idea what they are, right? And that's the main thing. Is my main thing is, is it's not from the day to day variations. It's about it's about finding the trends that I know that are benefiting to me. I don't dive into these numbers. And if they were poor this morning, all that would tell me to do is the fact that I have to prioritize my health and recovery today. 
right? I have to, yeah. I have to prioritize my physical being, my mental being, try to engage with people, get more connection, more time for myself, have a little more water, maybe eat a little bit better, try to get to bed and focus on getting better a little earlier today. All it means is that, hey, I may not have the same capacity to deal with everything today compared really to, to typical, but it does not change really my mindset around how I, I'm gonna deal with the day. It just preps me to make sure that I do the right things to making sure that I don't keep going down this rabbit hole where people from a physical standpoint become overtrained. And from, from a from a health overall health standpoint, we start getting to burnout or chronic stress. You might be changing my mind a little bit here, Greg. Okay, so I like the ring thing. I never, yeah. I mean, I, what can that tell you? What does the ring tell you? Great question. So wearable technology has significantly advanced from the early days of the Fitbit. Um, you know, early days of Fitbit was how many steps that I have, what's my heart rate right now, you know, and you know, how many hours of sleep that I get. And, and, and even at the time when they first came out, the numbers were drastically terrible uh, across the board. You know, oh. the amount of times that people wanted stress tests because they said, hey, my Fitbit said my heart rate was 200 beats per minute when I was reading a book um, was crazy, right? And so the, the accuracy levels were quite low. Um, but as things have improved, technology has improved quite drastically with wearable technology, things are getting pretty darn accurate when it comes to the numbers okay. that are coming out of them. So what can wearables tell you? Uh, so the, the major three things right now, I'd say from a general standpoint that wearables or smartwatches tell you is one that starts to look at your, your sleep. So it kind of looks at, it, it, it can now look at, I mean, relatively sleep quality. It, it, it shows REM sleep and deep sleep and light sleep and things like that. Now, the quality of data is not good. It's not necessarily super repeatable, but I find it too relatively important. Meaning the fact that if it says that I did, uh, you know, I, I averaged about an hour and a half of REM sleep, you know, uh, at the beginning, a month later, I now do two and a half hours of REM sleep, more likely my sleep quality has gone up. Whoa, 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 whoa. okay, stop a second. How does it do that? Yeah, so it, so then this is some of the other metrics that it calculates, right? So what sleep is one thing. How it calculates this is that there's a biometrics that it calculates. It calculates body temperature. Okay. Respiration okay. rate. Okay. Heart rate. Heart rate variability. Okay. Many other things that can happen from there, but and all derivatives within that, but also accelerometry in regards to movement as well. So based on certain criteria, mm -hmm. to do a true diagnostic, you know, um, sleep analysis, you need, you know, EEG right now to look at brain yeah, waves. Yeah. But what they're trying to do is can we use, can we remove that and use some of the biometrics that wearables can, can, can calculate to look at some of the, when people are in and out of different stages and things. So to me, it's, it's more relative, is that if you start getting higher numbers into deep sleep and REM sleep uh, and, and, and less time into you know, a wakefulness state or light sleep, you're more likely your sleep quality is improving uh, uh, from there. So those are kind of the big things. Uh, and then the last one is activity. You start to look at steps and um, your, your exercise heart rates and, and how fast you're moving and, and all those type of things. So it gives you some relative activity. So sleep, you have some, some biometrics, some, some health biometrics, and then activity are kind of the big three, the majority of, of smartwatches and wearable technologies that are out there. But in regards to where things are going, uh, I can go down a rabbit hole with this, but I won't. But there's so many other things that it can get into in regards to emotional states um, of what's going on and how feedback can happen from, from that, which is, which is quite, uh, quite interesting. But uh, yeah, those are the big three that wearables can, can look at. Okay, so the way I'm seeing it, and I'm gonna to have to include myself in this. A lot of us who like to accomplish a lot in a day may avoid the signs of mayday, mayday, because we're like, yeah, I'm fine. Not that I may have done this before in my life going, eh, no, it's fine, it's fine. Because I'm a machine, I can power through it. What I'm hearing from the first for the first time from you is yeah you can't put your head in the sand like it's going to say come on weston like this is where you are let's deal with it versus wait till it gets so bad that you're out flat with some illness or injury absolutely okay. right and so, oh okay <laughs> yeah no you're, you're completely right and so because sometimes there are challenges in life that we have the the right time the resources in order to be able to allocate to go do those things other times that we don't. And, and but you know, we, we attack those problems the same, the same way and typically because we're so used to be able to do that. When challenges come on, we, we attack them a certain way, right? That's the way that we're, we're wired to be able to do that. Whether yeah. it's we 
cower away, we get anxious, we emotionally become dysregulated, or the fact we just like put our head down in the sand, like you said, and go forward with it all. And so you, you want to see the impact of that actually has uh, onto you. you know, how much of an impact does doing that type of response actually have on my, my physiology when I do that? Is this the right time to be able to do that? When do I have to be able to pull the reins back and focus on me a little bit more into what's going on? And you kind of think of an athlete in a very similar way, is that you can, you can have a, a very similar design plan for two different types of athletes and they can incorporate into the same type of activity, but how they respond is going to be drastically different at different times of the year, different things are going on in their life, all that stuff is going to play in, in that, and the, the physiology can give you some feedback. Now, it's not saying it's the end-all be-all into what's going on, but if you pair that with a subjective understanding of what's going on, so you understand yeah. of how you're feeling, what's going on, have some interception a little bit more, understand that the, 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 the what your body and mind are going through and have some data to be able to back that up. It's the mirroring of those two things that are extremely valuable uh, into what's going on to, to an individual. But absolutely, wearable technology for me is uh, we talk about awareness, and we, um, you know those people that it doesn't matter what's going on in their life, everything's fine, it's great. Yeah, no stress. Yeah, I got some stress, but everything seems to be pretty darn good. And all the stuff, and you know, inside this is like, can you just take a look at you for a second? What can I do to kind of give you that wake up call? And so when I deal with people, it's like we get extensive amount of blood work done. We get them on the wearable product. We kind of show them, saying like, hey, this is what your body's going through right now. Right, and let's use this information to what your goals are, what you're feeling, and what and and what what everything we need to be able to accomplish, or you want to be able to accomplish, let's put all that, all those pieces together. It's not the whole picture, but it definitely adds a lot of insight, a lot of, uh, and a lot of feedback for individuals uh, as they go forward with the plan. You know, I'm going to go right to this next question because <laughs> it just happened to me two nights ago. I was at an event and the CEO of a big company practically dove over the sushi bar to find me. He's like, Weston, Weston, I need help. I have trainers, I have coaches, I have mental health coaches. I can't sleep. He's like, a few hours. I, I have no reason not to sleep. I got a great family. I make a lot of money, but I can't sleep. You got to do something. <laughs> and so I was telling him that you were coming on. I said, you know what? I bet you that's one of the big things you deal with. Because when I was looking at how you work with clients, it's the whole thing, which I want you to go over, which is I was seeing that I don't know if people are familiar with the biosoco social. I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. So but anyhow, how it. would you like I was he was like literally, I can't take it anymore. I can't sleep. Totally. Uh, yeah, the biopsychosocial model is, is, a, is a framework, right? It gives you the, uh, it's not perfect, but to me, it, it comprises all the merit, major areas of what health actually is, right? People have, I always ask this question, whether, uh, you know, I, I hire people or talk to them, I'm like, okay, you know, people say, I want to be healthy. Okay, but what, is, what does that mean to you? Like, w when you picture mm -hmm. a healthy you, a healthy Sandy, what yeah. is that picture? What does it look like? And everyone's answer is different. Of course. Right? It's like, oh, it's like, you know, I just want to be able to wake up and have energy. I want to make sure that I can, you know, make it through the day. I want to be able to be happy with my family. I want to be able to connect with other people. Like, everyone yeah. has different answers as to what healthy actually means, right? Does anybody but, have what I answered? I picture myself dancing around everywhere in stores. That's what it's healthy. Yeah, absolutely. It's like just pure joy. That's what healthy is to me. Total vitality. Like, not just here. It's yeah, it's about being joyous, right? And to the yeah. point of like, you know, uh, having the highs and, and be able to deal with the lows. Yeah, uh, with that bounce stuff, back right? quicker. I want to bounce back quicker. Absolutely. And so if you in, in our health system right now is very siloed, right? We look at specific lenses at certain times. Um, and this is what the biopsychosocial tries, model tries to be able to open up is to there's more areas to health than, you know, specific areas. You know, yeah. and, and we, you can probably relate to this is, you know, when I met my graduated with my, my master's degree and, and, you know, going through, you know, four years of, of undergraduate uh, and then two years of master's, you, you leave there thinking, hey, I have all the tools to solve the problems that are in front of me. Someone's got a condition, exercise can do it, I know what to do, that type of stuff. Exercise is a miracle drug, all that type of stuff. It's great, phenomenal. Very different when you come to practice. You start yeah. to realize that there's other limitations. And I realized really early on, it's to the point of, you know, with, with that degree, I kind of go, okay, well, I know exercise helps people and absolutely, you know, we're getting some benefits, but how do nutritionists get people better then? Right? How do how do you know medical doctors do this? How about psychologists? Like, 
they all help people, but I'm not dealing with any of the things that any of the tools that they have. So how, like, how can we harness all of these tools together? Like, what are they doing that I'm not, that I can help understand? And this is what led me down this path of understanding the, the whole person. You know, I started taking more in-depth nutrition courses, understanding sleep a bit more, understanding the, the complexities around psychosocial health of what the value of connections is, uh, the value of emotional regulation and agency and, uh, you know, interception, all these areas that yeah. people uh, need, need help with that, that all comprise into what makes it healthy individual uh, from there. So how we do that is uh, we have to be able to, uh, first off, it comes with the interview process of, of asking questions around these different areas. Then we do various validated and kind of put together assessments of various areas of the biopsychosocial model to kind of give an understanding of those. Each have a scoring system and the scoring system gives me an objective view uh, uh, of this individual from the biopsychosocial health. Where are the low hanging fruit comparatively to the data that we have at that point? What you're doing for exercise versus with the normal human being, where do you sit on that scale? Where do you sit in regards to your um, you know, your, your catastrophization of problems, right? Or your, your interceptive awareness, all these things. And we sit down and we look at that model and kind of, okay, well, the, based on objectively, here's a priority list from here. However, it may not situate with your envision of health or what your values are. So it's about open, having an open discussion of your values, your goals, and what the data shows, and start to develop a plan with all of that intertwined to look at getting you as healthy as possible. And then to me, to determine if this plan is going the right direction, right? Is the effort that you're putting into treat, you know, creating some sort of behavior change, is it actually making a meaningful difference to your health? And that's where wearable technology and remote monitoring yeah. helps with that process of, I don't wanna, you know, pardon my you know, language of this, but don't wanna beat a dead horse. Yeah. By going through the same thing and you have to do ice baths or you have to do these supplements, if they're not providing any, any true evidence before we do any kind of blood work or you know, you know, scans that take six months to a year in order to be able to, to, to figure out. So do you treat people there? Because I see a table right behind you. Yes, yeah. So uh, I'm in Vancouver, Canada. And, and so, uh, yeah, we have a, a clinic here. I'm in the clinic two days a week. Uh, seeing people uh, in person um, from here in, in the clinic here we have medical doctors we have naturopaths we have massage therapists physical therapists oh. uh, and we and we consult with other clinical counselors and health coaches and in, in kind of this whole area and every individual that comes through our door and, and we try to, to have this biopsychosocial approach and understanding in, into this process we sit down as a team with with tough cases and figure out what's the best direction for this individual to go am i the right practitioner for this this person and we really do it's very we don't call it uh this this clinic we don't call it multidisciplinary we call it interdisciplinary because we really truly deal with something you know a, a problem mm -hmm. or a case as a team and i don't again i'm not going to have this person in my room if i'm not the right person for them however i want to get them to facilitate to the right type of practitioner at the right time based on, on what I feel the, the needs are. And then we start getting assessments and treatments based on that specific area. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's wonderful. Like, so wait a minute, wait a minute. Every single client that comes to you, mm -hmm. they have this intake to decide where they should go. Yep. And then depending on what their needs are. They may never see me again. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, the amount of examples I can say in regards to, you know, coming to me where another practitioner was able to solve the problem within one or two sessions, uh, it's, it's quite, uh, it's quite amazing in that side of things where, you know, I have certain skill sets and in, in, in certain tools in my tool bag. Um, that's, that helps a lot of people in many different areas. But I always say to people, it's like, I know what I'm good at, but I absolutely know what I'm not good at. And I want to make sure that uh, when, if those things are highlighted, that I want to you know, kind of get you the right person uh, and that involved in that standpoint. Like, I'm not, just, I'm not just going to say, based on my knowledge, I feel that a paleo diet is good for this individual. I don't know because I don't have, to, I don't have the ability to, to do certain things. So I get them to our, to our naturopath to do more extensive testing in regards to what their capabilities are to figure out specifically what nutrients they need or deficient in or where they need supplementation. So they, to go a little more in depth in that side of things. Um, or, you know, over to massage therapists for, you know, uh, various um, ailments when it comes to their physical being that 
that needs a decreased amount of tone and more parasympathetic interaction and, and all these types of areas. So I, I really try to sit down and figure out what type of modality is best. Do I have that or does somebody else? And then I get them right to there and then we work as a team. I talk to them, we message back and forth. We have a big group messaging service that we go back and forth about individuals and saying what the plan is, where are we going with this. Uh, and then we have, and we try to quantify as much as we can to show that, hey, we're making progress, we're doing the right things, we're on the right track. Um, and, and we try to make shifts quite quickly uh, if, if things aren't going in the right direction. So, Greg, you actually look at the entire human being. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, we try. We try our best. And that and that's where I think, you know, everyone, especially yourself, is trending in that direction of understanding yeah. that you can't have this siloed approach. I, always, I, I use the example of, you know, the way the medical system views mental illnesses is that it's a, it's a, it's a unidirectional way where it's the chemistry is affecting the person. Right, the, the, the chemicals and this are causing reactions, uh -huh. and they don't understand the bi-directional nature of that. It could be the person's experiences and traumatic events and the way they react to various stressors, things that have been ingrained in them for a time that is affecting their physiology the other way around. So you gotta deal with the person, and that's not the solution because the solution is not purely just medication at that point. If it was, the problem would be solved already. Okay, this is a whole nother podcast. <laughs> Because it's a subject that's very near and dear to my heart. And so many of my listeners have written in, not for your segment, but I get often over and over again. I'm just not sure away about the way my doctor wants to prescribe this medicine for this condition for my kid, for my parent, I mean, for me. And I need you to break that down a little bit more because we went quickly over it. So again, somebody goes to their therapist because they're stressed out, having anxiety attack or depression. Take me from there. Yeah. So um, we'll go from the from the medical side of things, right? So yeah. obviously, you know, they see a medical doctor. I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling you know yeah. sad, and, and they produce a, a, a medication, uh, right? Because their thought process around that is that it's the physiology that's changing the psychology of the individual. It's, okay. It's I got unidirectional, it. right? So it's like, if I change, therefore, if I change the, 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 the physiology, it will change the psychology. I'm with you. Right. The, and then, but the thing is to me is to the point, well, then how do psychologists get people better? How do we focus on the person and the past traumas and, and the history of the individual that can then gotcha. impact our physiology? We know that's the case. We know that if we change our emotional state, the way that our thought processes go, we can yeah. change our physiology. So there's a bi-directional thought process in that standpoint. But the thing is, is that if you don't understand that or seek it, again, the education piece is so big, which is why the values of podcasts like this yeah. it needs to gotcha. be continuously uh, uh, voiced in that standpoint because it's not when people seek care and see a medical doctor they have that singular view of like saying oh medications change gotcha. the physiology we're, go we're going that direction but you can't it, it, it's a it, it's a piece of the puzzle and depending on the individual how things are going where things are where really of, of truly looking at the biopsychosocial person the, the uh, 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 nature of that person will determine how much of an impact that medication will will have I got for that person? Yeah. yeah, which to me makes logical sense. But yeah. you're right. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah, completely. Go ahead. So I have to ask: Is this an out-of-pocket center, like not covered by insurance? Yeah. So, well, in Canada, it's an intriguing thing. So, um, you know, hospital visits, um, you know, uh, going to see a medical doctor, lots of stuff is our, under our, our national system, right? So a lot of that is, is paid for. Uh, but majority of our services, uh, osteopaths, phys uh, physical therapists, naturopaths, yep. are part of the, the extended benefit plans uh, for pe people. So if they're employed, typically they have a certain amount of al uh, money allocated per year to be able to subsidize a lot of these services. Um, so it's not purely out of pocket. It can be, uh, it can be kind ah. of subsidized. Yeah, a, a lot of that is, I mean, yeah, if you're not, I mean, if you have any type of extended benefits plan, which a vast majority of Canadians do, uh, a lot of this can be subsidized, whether, you know, it's a certain percentage or a certain amount of dollars per year, uh, depending on, on the plan of the package. But uh, a lot of this can be uh, subsidized uh, up to a certain amount uh, for each individual per year. Yeah, because we have, do you ever hear of concierge medical care? Yeah. That's completely out of pocket. That's, yeah, that's what most this would be. 
probably for us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now it's it's yeah. I mean, to a degree, we'll, we'll you can have some obviously some benefits and some coverage. We do. Uh, Canada is just starting with the the private more concierge type of medical services that have you know people are purely out of pocket for. Uh, yeah. These kind of private uh, institutions um, that have medical doctors and, and that type of stuff. This is not the same uh, as those. We don't have a. Those are like yearly memberships and have certain amount of services under that yearly membership. We're a pay for service. So whatever mm -hmm. service that you need, uh, we'll be able to do that. We don't require people to be members or can. can I got you. We, we're, we're involved as, as long uh, or as needed uh, uh, for individuals. Yeah. All right. So where are you the other days? You said you're there two days a week. Yeah, uh, the other time is is obviously with wearable technology. I've, I've done a lot of um, uh, educating around that type of stuff. I've also uh, started a, a health tech company uh, founded with uh, two other individuals. It's a software uh, based uh, solution where we pair with wearable uh, products out there. So uh, we are now paired with uh, Aura Ring, a company called Biostrap, uh, Fitbit. We're going to start adding more and more type of companies to what's going on. And what we do is we provide people a biopsychosocial assessment. So we've highlighted 10 specific factors that include exercise, uh, physical activity, nutrition, sleep habits, our emotional regulation, purpose, agency, self-acceptance, connections, relationships. So we do 10 different factors and we assess those for people uh, through, through, a, um, through some surveys. And then we provide you what we call our biopsychosocial assessment. So we look at holistically where you compare to all the data that we've accumulated to that point. Are you doing, you know, all the things you possibly can and need to do in a specific area, or are you lacking in other areas? And then we provide you with uh, um, a list, a prioritized, you know, healthy uh, um, behavior list, a health behavior list uh, that you can start to be able to look at, uh, various lifestyle modifications you can do to improve your overall health and well-being. And then we pair with the wearable product to show you, hey, you're on the right track or we're not on the right track. I did the questionnaire. I did the survey. I thought it was awesome. I yeah. never filled out something like that. It was yeah. really extensive. Yeah. yeah, I would recommend everyone go through and do it. Yeah, then that's that's the only the beginning. That's the initial one. And then when you're oh. into the actual, um, you'll get an invitation to then go to, through the application. So we have a, a mobile app. That's, that's why I said, where do you get your info from? And it was a asking all the different information for me. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's doing some of that. And then we get into the nitty gritty. Then we start to dive into each specific area, right? And based on your subjective way that you fill out the survey, plus your objective information that we get from the wearable, from the, from the app, we'll be able to design a plan specifically for, for you. It was, it was like, wait a minute. I never answered this on a survey about my health. Yeah, it was a great, it was a great survey. Okay, so where do you want to go with this? Like, I see what you're doing now. You're there two days. You do a lot of speaking engagements. I see that you started a new company. What, what, what do you want to do with it in five years? Yeah, so the biggest thing for me is, is you know, this movement of understanding the, the holistic nature of health and, and, the, and really the amount of agency that we have over our health and well-being. And it's, I think it's been taken away from us for a long period of time that we have to rely on certain external things to be able to, um, to really truly be healthy, which we, we don't. And, and from a one-on-one -on -one basis, it's, it's difficult to be able to kind of really create change. Right? You know, it's great that we have an individual basis so that we can test out these things. And to me, as, as I said on a, uh, on a presentation, is the fact that to me, I, I view this as my playground. This is where I get to be able to try things and test things and get to be able yeah. to do a bunch of stuff. Like it's pretty fun that I, I get to be able to be a little more free and and, uh, and go do these things, and not be as rigid uh, with my 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 words uh, or you know my interventions that I do. We can play play around a little bit into that because it's it's usually not a um, A equals B type of uh, situation. So we get to have a little bit of fun. The big goal is to be able to really. Um, really get people to understand that level of agency uh, that they have over their health, that they can, you know, uh, research shows that our health outcomes determined for healthy or not 50% of it is through our behaviors more than anything else, more mm -hmm. than genetics, access to care, our environment, our behaviors control 50% of our health outcomes. Yeah. So how do we let people know that they do have a significant impact, right? Just because you had some sort of health scare or something goes on is that there's a lot that you can do about it, right? And it's not too late to be able to go forward. It's not the end. Um, and the fact that it, it has to be a continuous thing, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, when people, and you're going to resonate with this, is people sometimes when they go through a, um, 
period of life where you know they're depressed right low mood uh maybe suicidal and and they kind of get through it um over you know months years whatever it may be um going through that right now with, with a family member where they're going through some substance abuse stuff and they, they get out of that cycle and they kind of go and, and it, it always pains you when i hear the whole thing of like okay now i'm good now i'm fine it's like no 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 this is the start we're out of the weeds now we have to be able to progress and we can keep we can't ignore why this happened we have to continue on progressing and i use the example of this it's like saying okay your goal is to be fit physically fit right your goal is there you start running you start exercising you start you know increasing your running miles you start lifting blah 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 and then you reach your goal whatever that is whether it's a certain amount of weight or some amount of distance that you run do you just stop are you fit for the rest of your life i wish no <laughs> you can't you can't be like, now I'm good. I'm fine. I don't have to do anything that I, all the work that I put in to be able to get out of there. Yeah. I'm fine now. And so this is where, you know, we have to understand that, that, that health is going to be, it's changing and evolving all the time for individuals. And this is, again, the power of this assessment, these apps is that we want to be able to provide some sort of feedback to where you're at right now. You know, just because I'm, you know, uh, my emotional regulation at this specific point of time is, is low. It doesn't mean that I need to only focus on that for the rest of my, my life. Things are going to change. Things are going to evolve. And it's kind of like this reassessing. It's like being in the forefront of your health and well-being. Let's catch the problems before they become major issues, right? We don't, I don't like the whole thing where people talk about, oh, this person had a heart attack out of nowhere. No, it's been brewing for multiple periods of time, right? Like yeah. just because they had, you know, the eat healthy majority of the time, uh, and the exercise doesn't negate the fact that they, they have alcohol every single night, that they have poor sleep habits, they have a high stress environment, they are isolated majority of the time, they have a, a, you know, a deteriorating relationship with their wife and their kids. Like all those things play into that individual that they're not just being aware of. If we have some sort of way to get people aware of that, both subjectively, where you start to understand of like looking at all else of health, but also objectively, you mirroring those two together, that's what I want. I want I want this, as Atia, Peter Atia says, that that medicine 3.0. Yeah. Understand the, you know, get to the to the optimal range or the, or the the you know be you know look at areas all areas of health and well-being, making sure that we're addressing things before they start to slide off the off the hill. You know, I'm just gonna call you dude. <laughs> Yo, dude. Um, I would love to. Are, do you go into schools? Because I would love to see you in high schools and colleges. Get them younger. You know, start the habit. Totally, yeah, and and yeah, I haven't I haven't done that yet. I haven't gone to schools. Obviously, my my son's starting to go. Uh, you know, starting to get into school, starting to see some of those things. But um, no, it's it's um, yeah, it, it, you're, you're starting with people now that um, I think it's 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 a hard message sometimes for kids to understand because you still have that invincibility factor for majority of them where they think it doesn't necessarily matter what's going on. How age I think they would get you. I mean there's yeah. so much anxiety and depression there. I'm telling you. That's in that and they well. like tech not I'm just saying we'll talk later because I do a lot of speaking engagements with prevention and yep. it's different than years ago. I, I, and I'm super excited about that because that's I'm, again, I'm yeah. Yeah. And I think mental health is such an important factor and how the, all that ties in, in together. Yeah. And I think yeah. the people that are most receptive are the people that are going, you know, kind of see that their mortality is, yeah, is come, you know, it, it's, there's, they're, they're not as, as invincible as they once thought. Well, they're concerned about their mental. I mean, and college kids, the stigma is wearing off, not in high school as much, but, but here's the thing I wanted to make sure I got in and I know it's, you're not selling technology to little kids, but maybe their parents would get it. I was brought in to a first grade class by a teacher because the kids were having problems sleeping at night. And this is in a really nice area. It was happy and sad for me. I mean, yeah. when I, and I did, we created fun dances, you know, it would, I made it fun, but I, when they were drawing their pictures, Greg, of, you know, what's your concerns, what, you know, whatever. And the teacher pretty much knew 80% can't sleep at night. And you're going to say, okay, maybe it was gadgets. They weren't, no, they were worried about the world. So I'm thinking, okay. Oh, totally. <laughs> Something's got to change here. We're talking nice area, great parents. Well, uh, what about the other kids? Totally. 
Yeah, and, and it's, I know this is one of my major concerns with, with my own kids and going through and, and, and talking to my clients that have kids that are a little bit older and how they kind of you know, manage through it. And, and uh, uh, I mean, luckily, you know, to a degree, you know, I, uh, I haven't had a TV, I haven't had a cable in over a decade and I don't have a TV in my house uh, at all uh right now wow right and, and it's but it's not to the point that i i'm not naive enough to the point that i don't think my, my my kids will never use technology because that's the way the world is they have to do stuff like this and use the phone I completely understand it but it's it's a it's to the point of of getting out and being resourceful and being creative and, and, and that type of stuff from there but they still you know we have movie nights where we have a projector that we show things on and shut and, the uh, front door yeah. no yeah that's awesome so, but it's things like that. So they're still, they're still there. They still use the, it's an iPad that's still, you know, starting to be able to use now when he, when he hit five, that it was given, uh, given starting to be able to utilize us to be able to figure it out and make sure that, that things are there. But I, I completely agree that, I mean, the, the amount of, um, sympathetic, you know, fight or flight, uh, information stimuli that is out there for us. You know, we, we talk about, you know, it used to be very historical. It's about food and survival and very basic things that weren't on all the time. But now we're concerned about what's going on around the world, what's going on with politics. Our sports teams lost that we start to be able to, to figure out and ruminate on for, for some reason. Uh, and being a former athlete myself, I, you know, I, I, I was there too. But there's so many things that we that cause us to be in a, in a high stress situation that negates things like our sleep which then impacts us with our concentration, our energy levels. Um, it's, it's a, it's an amazing thing. And, and yeah, if you're, I mean, if you're seen as, as early as grade one, yeah, then I can definitely see the value in, in uh, educating people around these areas and, 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 and the parent, them. because what you're saying is I know, and I'm, and these are awesome parents, most of them yeah. with great intentions, but I know for a fact the TV's on a lot. The news is on a lot. The kids are hearing it. They're picking up. I'm a, even if you don't say it, they're picking up your vibe. They're picking up your concerns. If you're tuning in to all that negativity. So, oh, Greg, that's a whole nother show that I'm fascinated. The movie screen. I can't wait to tell people. And how are you going to keep that up? Oh, my God. That's awesome. and intriguing. So I, I have so many other questions, but I'm only going to ask two. Yeah. Do you get everything on your phone and do you limit yourself on the time you spend on your phone? Me personally? You personally, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, so everything is on my phone, but my do not disturb hits at six o'clock p.m. Uh, so that is when I, I stop getting any notifications of what's going on and it doesn't kick in. Now I'm a very early riser, so I'm up at four. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, of course you are. Yeah. <laughs> So it doesn't it doesn't kick in until six a.m. So I have no notifications uh, for about uh, twelve hours. On my phone. Okay. Then my second question is: obviously, your wife is on board with this, or your partner. I'm sorry, I didn't want to assume wife. Your yeah, partner, wife, yeah. yeah, is on board with this. How do you find out what's going on in the world? Where do you get your news from, or you don't? Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we 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 talk about it. Um, you know, from from our perspective, uh, we're very much into like if we hear if we hear some sort of story, right? Say it's on like social media, right? So we have some things. We don't just go, "Hey, we seen on social media. This is what's happening." We start to then investigate it into more legitimate sources. So then we start how to though? Work. How do you do that? Yeah. So so this would be through uh, um, uh, one talking to individuals that know the subjects. Okay. Right? So talking to friends that, that, that know the specific area and get their take on it. So you start reading uh, news articles from, from, from all over the spectrum of, of their, their agendas, right? Not just one specific website and things like that. So we try to get the whole picture. Like to me, I don't just, I never have a specific stance on a subject when, you know, I, I first learned about it. It's usually, I take my time and I sit down to understand kind of like, hey, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's truth in there but it's not the whole truth so let's start to be able to look at the whole picture where where are the commonalities of all these stories and that, it's funny enough that's what that's the approach how i approach this is that some people rely on certain tests and certain assessments and that's the end all be all right i do this task it tells me this like i do a um a, a muscular test or they're weak in this muscle and i go no it's it's one test we, we have multiple ways to look at this specific thing in many different areas 
not just one. And it gives you a general conclusion, but not, it can always change, right? Just like that's what science to me is, is the fact that you, based on the evidence available, you make some sort of general conclusion that's not 100% accurate, but it's as close as we possibly can. But if that changes, then you change the way your thought process goes. Greg, your clients are lucky, lucky people. I find you so fascinating. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to wrap up. I knew I would love you. You, Oh, my God. Oh, I could hug you. But let's find out a little bit more about you. So what is your routine? When you wake up in the morning, obviously, now you wake up at 4 a.m. Yep. We need to know what's your daily routine to get in that positive, powerful headspace. Totally. So, uh, yeah, alarm set for four o'clock. I, I get up. Uh, I drink water right when I, when I wake up. Um, from there, I do kind of like a stretch routine. And typically at that time, I uh, depending on my, my mood set, I don't look at my wearable yet. Don't look at my information. Don't know if I slept well or bad or what my numbers are. But I... Um, I go through kind of what I feel my body needs for that day, whether it's, okay. um, you know, listen to motivational people, whether it's uh, informative, whether it's music, whether it's uh, brown noise, where I just need to be able to get into myself and my body. So I kind of like go off on what I feel and that I do a, a, a various movement routine Then I do my exercise routine from there. Uh, so I, I get moving right the first thing of the yeah. day. I then kind of make my food, uh, get ready to go, start making the kids uh, their food, uh, coffee for the wife, which she loves uh, waking up to, uh, making it uh, fresh for her. Um, yeah, and then uh, and then I, I'm off uh, for my day. Uh, usually my day starts at eight. I uh, usually end probably around four o'clock on a typical day, late day five. Uh, and then you know maybe some emails will come in and trickle after that. But as soon as it's six, you know five o'clock hits, typically I 100% focus on the family and kids um, to to help with them and be present with them. And I know they won't be little for long. Um, so I, I focus on them and, and be I be with my wife, talk to uh, my wife, talk to my kids. I'd be with them, listen about the day, you know, play with them, interact with them, go outside, you know, do puzzles and, and I'd be with them till bedtime. And then uh, their bedtimes are usually pretty close to, to my bedtime as well. And then, uh, and then, uh, yeah, and then it's up, uh, up early again the next day. Okay, so that's awesome. But let's back up because they're going to want to know what you eat, your food. You said I make sure. your food? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I do every year. I, I get excessive blood work done to determine kind of like how my my numbers are going and and uh, where things are, are at from from there. So my breakfast, uh, which I've had the same since college, pretty much, which is uh, quite crazy. It's been the last ten years. Um, yeah, I, I grew up on on um, on oatmeal, so I do that with with cheese seeds, flax seeds. I do that with blueberries uh, and cinnamon, and kind of like that's my my basic from there. I then have, uh, uh, used to be four eggs, now it's only two eggs uh, in that particular. I then have a, uh, um, a protein shake that I make. Uh, we have a vegetable garden uh, at our house. Uh, so my of course mother you do. Likes, yeah, my mother-in-law likes to make all these fresh things. So we have spinach there. So I put spinach in there and, and blueberries and some protein powder, some more kind of you know, avocado and, and, and that. And then, um, you know, lunch is, is, is typically pretty... Um, you know, pretty, pretty light uh, in that standpoint, but I do try to make an emphasis on having like a, a big amount of protein during that meal, but it's usually vegetables from the garden or, or whatever maybe may be. So vegetables and meat from that standpoint. And then, um, a dinner is, is a typical, uh, typical, uh, you know, heavy, heavy protein from there. Again, vegetables from, from the garden. And that's where we kind of introduce either a, you know, some sort of, of, of starch from our standpoint, which is, uh, you know, typically either quinoa, wild rice, uh, yeah. um, in that type of area, uh, from there, but sometimes we go off the rails and Friday night is, uh, we have pizza night. Uh, I knew you were going to say that you have to have yeah. pizza night. Yeah. We make, we make our own pizzas. The kids get to choose, uh, what they want to do. We go to the store, they pick what they want and they put on their pizza and, and then, uh, they're super happy. So. Okay. I, I, I got to ask one more question in a yeah. hurry. Your family, did you grow up like this? Were your mom and dad like this? You know, where'd you get this from? Or did you, you know, go poof, off the rails? No, I, I uh, you know, it's, it's, it's rare to be able to hear, uh, but I had an unbelievable childhood. I have two older brothers. Uh, we're all very close uh, family. Um, they're always supportive. They're always around. Uh, my dad was a, was a guy that he always had a to-do list and got everything on that done to-do list. He knew exactly what needed to be done and, and did it without um, complaining or, or anything from that. It was very level-headed. Um, mom was was um, always there and, and super supportive. And, and uh, so no, it was, it was very, uh, a very, a very great childhood with, with you know, a lot of great people to, to look up to. Yeah. 
I'm glad to hear that. My husband says the same way. I say, is this pleasant, Bill? Because we now know yeah. where he grew up. I mean, they all love each other. They're friends and family, yeah. supportive. I'm like, it's nice to hear. Well, Ray Galliott, thank you so much for being on the show. It's really been a pleasure. But before we go, please tell my let's keep it real people every which way they can find you or fly up to see you. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, if you're ever in Vancouver, I'm, I'm uh, treating out of a company called Fit to Train. We're right downtown Vancouver. Uh, from there, we get we multiple different uh, practitioners here, uh, many different areas, and we really do uh, you know act as a triage uh, from there. But that's that's one way. Um, uh, I was told to to make a website uh, for for me. So, uh, Greg Elliott dot uh, ca. Uh, you can find kind of you know what I do from there. I do some online you know consultations if need be. I, I don't do a lot of them. Okay. From there, I always, you know, have a quick call with individuals, making sure I'm the right fit for them. I'm, I, you know, like I said, I'm good at certain things, but not good at other things. I and I'm, you know, about seventy five percent of the time, I point people in, in a different direction than myself uh, because of um, their needs are, are a little bit different or, or better uh, addressed with somebody else. Um, and then our startup company is called uh, HealthQB, and so the website's yourhealthqb.com. I can go there. You can fill the the survey that's there. Uh, you, can, you can download application. We're adding new wearables all the time. Um, and you can uh, and you can uh, join us to get your biopsychosocial assessment done. Okay, my let's keep it real people. Come on, isn't Greg refreshing? You're going to want to share it, like it, rate it. We both would appreciate it. And you know what I'm going to say. Until next time, toodles. Bye, Greg. Bye, Sandy. Thank you so much.